Well, good morning, everyone, and welcome to the Two Sisters Wealth Wellness Wednesday podcast. My name is Janice, aka Wellness Diva 5.0, and I'm so sorry that Carol Sue, aka Nani Boss, is not able to be with us here with us today. Um, we are excited to get this conversation going, and I am just going to tell you that I lovingly um, now refer to Dr. Amber Tishner, our guest for the Two Sisters podcast today, as a repeat offender. And <laughs> let me explain that. Um, she was on these, excuse me, my podcast stories that inspire us, the author series, and of course, I have her book right here. Um, Behind Frenemy Lines, Rising Above Female Rivalry to Be Unstoppable Unstoppable Together. Welcome to the Two Sisters podcast, Dr. Amber. Thank you so much. It's a pleasure to speak with you again, Janice. Well, thank you so much. And <laughs> of course, the, you know, we're, we're going to obviously be talking, chatting about your book as well. But you are the founder of 2B Coaching and Consulting in actuality, probably one of the thought leaders on the topic of women's rivalry. And I think, Dr. Amber, when we hear women's rivalry, (laughs) that can be in so many different aspects of our lives, whether it's personal, whether it's business. And there's really a process as females that we go through when we are faced with something like that. You are so right. And um, initially, when I started doing my research on this topic, I had focused, you know, on female rivalry just in the working environment. But as I dove into it, I realized that, unfortunately, for many women, it's um, pretty prevalent every day. It can be in your family. It, of course, can be at work. It can be with your neighbors. It can be at church. I mean, there's really um, nowhere that this behavior is off limits. And in fact, it's actually fairly rare. I mean, I've been researching this for a chunk of time now. It's rare that I meet a woman who has not been impacted by rivalry. And I use that word as the broader banner of behavior, but in that there are lots of different ugly types of behaviors. And excuse me, and and that is so true because, you know, as you were describing that. And as I refer back to some of my notes, and of course, listen to your prior podcast with me on the stories podcast, you know, one of the things I think that sticks out to me the most behind the insights and techniques that you really um, talk about in your book was that this really can, in so many different ways, as you have on the back of, of your book, will empower women to identify their own frenemies, transcend those relationships relationships, and live their best lives. And that's pretty profound because I think a lot of times when we are going through those rivalry situations, we don't see how we can be empowered or maybe how we can empower ourselves to empower others. It's so true. And especially if you're in a rivalry or rivalrous situation, that's always a hard word to say. Um, You often don't see it when you're in it. So it's very hard to look outside of the box because the behaviors are very, you know, intangible or passive aggressive. So, and often women who experience it, I call it that they lose their shine or their world feels gray. So when you're in it, it can be very hard to empower others or, you know, put that different lens on. But I think it's so important that we do look at it that way because we're half the population and women can support and uplift each other. And I firmly believe we can be better together. Oh, that is, that is so true. And after I read your book, you know, it gave me a different a different perspective as far as the insight of being on both different spectrums. And I guess what I mean by that is maybe perhaps at some point in my life, you know, <laughs> was I maybe doing, uh, hopefully I wasn't, yeah. um, where I wasn't forthcoming or whatever it may be. Or maybe had, I have, I'm sure probably along the lines, I had some type of rivalry going on, but yeah. I sure can relate to being on the tail end of that and being yeah recipient of that. And that 
really stinks. It, it, you're saying it very nicely. It does stink. In fact, it can, it's horrible, but, um, and often it, it's simply because you may be in the wrong place at the wrong time. I tell so many people, typically when you're targeted, the behavior has nothing to do with you. Unfortunately, it doesn't feel that way, but it has everything to do with a person who's issuing the negative behavior. But you also do bring up a good point, Janice, because, you know, I talk to a lot of women about this, a lot of groups and looking at, have, have we ever been a perpetrator of it? And that sounds like a harsh word, but right. I'm sure I have too. I look back in high school or college and I think now no, but sometimes you, you don't do it on purpose or maybe you did. And, you know, we move past that, but it's, it's sometimes easy to get caught in something where, you know, unfavorable, unfavorable behaviors can come out. And um, I think just honing in and looking inward as to what's triggering you to make you feel that way is the first step to kind of practice that pause and, and even maybe realize that you might be doing something like that. Mm, and it all brings me to, and, and of course, you know, uh, I kept my stickies on here. Uh, <laughs> people know me, love, uh, know that I love my um, little sticky notes and, and what you say in one of the first um, uh, pages of, <coughs> of the book was, and, and you ask a very specific question, do you compete or do you empower? Yeah. And, you know, think about that a moment. And, you know, for instance, with my sister and I, of course, you know, co-hosting this podcast, you know, have we competed against each other? Well, I'm sure we did when we were kids, you know, I can, yeah. you know, of course we did, but really we empower each other, um, which is a great, it, it's a give and take, you know, we empower ourselves to be, be better than we were the day before. And, I think specifically, and obviously you are certainly the expert on this topic, um, having that relationship with someone, obviously she's my sister, but some siblings, as you mentioned, you know, it could be a family member or friend or whatever it is, but it's even more so difficult if you have that rivalry competition, if you will, yeah. with a sibling. I think it's very hard and um, I, um, yeah, compete or empower. And let me just preface that. I think sometimes competition can be an absolute wonderful thing. It can push when it's positive, it can push you to do and be better. So I think a little bit of it is absolutely healthy. Um, it's when it turns ugly. And I think in a family setting, if you have an ugly type of competition like that, I've never experienced that personally. I've talked to women that have, you know, either from another sibling, a sister, or maybe a mother or an aunt or a cousin. And it, um, it sounds just completely awful because your family is supposed to be your safe place or your place of reprieve where you can be yourself. But if you're always feeling like you're on guard or walking on eggshells, which is a common trait or feeling when you're dealing with a frenemy or a, you know, an ugly rivalry situation, it's got to be utterly exhausting to have that in your family, which, you know, the safe place. So, um, yeah. A lot, and especially if you're young and you're in the house or you're living with somebody, you know, what do you do to escape that? Right. And that's obviously not an easy thing because you're, we know, obviously you can pick your friends, but you can't pick your family, especially. No, not at all. <laughs> under the same roof, that can be very difficult. Yeah. And, you know, I was watching, which brings me to another point. I was watching this show the other night and there was definitely a rivalry going on mm -hmm. and the person the perpetrator i'll just say that was doing these things to obviously fray the relationship with the other person and i looked at that differently and, and obviously i know it, it was a show yeah. but i looked at that differently and i thought wow i've seen that happen a lot yeah and it um I think it's not uncommon. I think what is um, the problem with this type of behavior, it's commonly not talked about. 
the behavior is probably pretty common, whether, you know, as we said earlier, it's with family or friends or colleagues or, you know, whomever the person may be, but it's um, kind of a taboo topic to talk about. And I realized from all the research and even after experiencing it, like when you're in it, because you do feel like your world is gray, you're being squashed or flattened. It, it can be very hard to share with somebody because it's not very tangible to always share. Sometimes it's your feeling or, you know, a she. it might come out as a she said, she said. But um, I think the more we talk about it, the more people realize they are not alone in this behavior. And it is quite common, unfortunately. And I think that's what we need to change. Like just talking about it lets people know it's not accepted or tolerated. Right. Yeah. And and I think too, that when we, when we talk about these matters that, you know, this really, obviously your book opened my eyes to so many things that I've seen, um, so many things that I've witnessed and it, it made me want to be better in how I approach things because uh -huh you know, we all have our certain way, for instance, of, do, of doing things. So, yeah. you know, I've, I've gone back into maybe different things in my lives where, okay, did I, hmm, I looked at the situation differently. From yeah. a different spectrum. It really opened my eyes. Uh, I love hearing that Janice. Thank you. And um, yeah, I think that's it. It's just, if we can view it differently, maybe we'll react or approach it differently. And uh, going back to what you brought up about the TV show, I think in um, in media, social media or TV shows or movies, I th pop culture, we'll say, um, I think often this type of behavior is um, made, shown to be made fun of. In, in some form, it's a comedy or it's entertainment. And I think that's also something we need to change because you look at like reality TV shows or different things where women are pivoted against each other. It's like watching a train wreck, but people watch it. And so I know that it does have some serious ramifications if that's really going on. So people will laugh and say, oh, it's a cat fight or it's women being dramatic. And, um, it's more than that, especially if it's a long-term type of behavior. I think it totally goes into the bullying category. And I certainly couldn't diagnose somebody, but I do know women that I've talked to, they've had some sort of PTSD as a result of an ongoing, you know, long rivalry situation. Hmm. And that, you know, it makes me think too, that I think when you're at that point in a relationship, there's often a power struggle going on. Yeah. And I hate to ask this, but in, in, of course you mentioned bullying. Why, why do people do that? I mean, I know that that's kind of a yeah. blank question. No, um, often um, there are so many reasons why somebody may act this way towards somebody else. And I think every situation is vastly different, but what I always constantly go back to is you have to have, ugh, have to be happy in your own skin. So if you are unhappy with yourself, chances are it's going to be hard to be happy with other people. And one of my favorite quotes is women who love themselves, love other women. And you can see that resonate and shine if somebody is truly happy in their own skin. So I think initially, no matter how it comes out or what the actions are, fundamentally, that person is not happy with who they are. Because if you are, how could you treat somebody so poorly. I think then there comes in the 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 different categories or character characterizations. So the need for power, um, mm -hmm. the con the need for control. Um, maybe it's true envy or jealousy. You know, it 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 goes beyond competition, and you have that green eyed monster of jealousy in you, and that's not healthy either. You know, I want what you have, and so um, there's just different faucets or ang facets or angles to look at this that it could stem from so many different reasons as to why. Um, and it, it also depends on, you know, if it's at work or home or church or whatever, but truly 
I think the bottom line of it all is being unhappy with who you are. And that's when you really have to look inward and say, ask some hard questions of yourself. Mm, And that is very hard to do. (laughs) It is, especially if you're not, I mean, if you're not self-aware, you would never ask those questions to begin with. So, but I think if you're feeling angry all the time or you're unhappy all the time, I think it's just looking in and saying, okay, what's going on? Why am I so unhappy? Why does everything trigger me? Why do I feel rage or am I mad at everybody? So I think, um, because that's a sad way to live your life. And so maybe there are past traumas or things that you haven't dealt with that, you know, could be the, the foundation for all of this, but asking hard questions really can help you overcome or at least start the process to overcome. Why? Mm, That is so true. Um, I'm obviously thinking of different situations and it it kind of goes back to that unresolved trauma and and yes. you have to look at the the forgiveness part and I think when we say or when we we're to that point where we obviously want to move on with our own lives you kind of I know for me like I have to go through a certain process I can't even begin to explain it but it, yep. it's a process for me. And yeah, when I got to this specific point of saying, okay, I need to resolve this for myself. And the only way to do that is to forgive the person. Forgiveness is tough. Yeah. I, it's multifaceted. Oh, yes. And I think what you're saying is so true, Janice, because the process you're talking about is going to be unique for every person. There's no structure, there's no follow A, B, C, D or rules, you know, but I think it's, you also coined it, it's the awareness of doing it for you. And um, I think in my research, I was actually, you know, I conducted, when I first initially started doing this research, I did it for my dissertation for my PhD. And so I have to go in to that research with a very open mind. I can't, you know, project or think about what my outcomes will be. And I was so surprised about how much forgiveness played into my research. And so I interviewed nine women initially for my, when I first started this work and all but one hugely talked about the aspect of forgiveness. And um, it wasn't for the other person, it was for them. And it's because they were so impacted by this hurtful behavior that as a result of being a victim of this ugly behavior, they knew moving forward as leaders or in their workplace or whatever they were doing, that they did not want that to happen to other women. And they knew how to flip it which was exceptional. And the one woman, unfortunately, that never talked about forgiveness, she, it, it sucked her dry. It, be, it, it ate her alive and she was unhappy. She left the environment she was working in. And I don't truly think she ever got over it. And um, the other women, it was still there, but they had to release it because if you, I firmly believe if you don't release it, in the act of forgiveness or whatever way works for you, that means the other person still has control over you. Oh my gosh. That is so true. And obviously resonates with me on a very personal level. Yeah. And I look back to this specific situation and I want to say, I don't know, it took me three or four years, I guess, because that, like that hurt always there but what I did not realize at the time as I I looked back when I got to that point where I was like okay I'm ready to let this go yeah was in actuality I had done that to a certain extent but didn't realize it and what I mean by that is when this situation came up I took hold of it and said okay this is what I need to do. And this is who I need to talk to. And I did that. And I I look back at that. I'm like, that really was a start, but it really took me a while to realize that, you know, I had begun the process, but didn't realize it. Yeah. 
And it's hindsight. I know going through this, this type of rivalry, hindsight is the golden ticket because it's so hard to see it when you're knee deep in something because you don't, I know when I went through it, I didn't have the capacity to reflect or look around me. I felt like I was barely getting by. And so um, that reflection is huge. And, um, but yeah, being able to let go and, you know, you mentioned three or four years, I, it's not a quick fix. There's a lot of hurt involved. There's, you know, you have to, um, there's so many emotions that come in with it. So yeah, I mean, it can take a long time. Oh yeah. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. What would you say? perhaps to somebody listening right now. And by the way, I want to welcome all of our amazing listeners currently on the Wisdom Audio app. I see some familiar names. So thank you so much for being here today. What would you say is one thing or maybe a strategy, maybe it's a tip that someone could really implement today? In other words, whether it's, you know, taking that time for themselves to really gather their thoughts um because we know for every action there's a reaction yeah so what would be a tip or a strategy that really someone could use today for whatever rivalry type of thing they may be faced with i one of my biggest things i always go back to is to practice the pause and that helps you to gather your thoughts. And so it's so easy to be reactive, which um, if something ugly is targeted towards you, then that sometimes means you're stooping to their level of behavior. And um, who wants to do that? Because then it becomes a cycle you know, of negativity. So practice the pause, gather your thoughts, as you said, and then really like, it comes down to asking some of these hard questions. If, is this worth it to me? Um, if I feel like I'm always walking on eggshells, if I feel like I'm always defending myself, like, and I never go into a relationship thinking I'm going, you know, I'm giving this, so I need to get this in return, you know, it, but in any type of relationship, there's, there's a give and take. That's just the nature of how these things work. And so, at some point, if you are looking backward, you know, when you're gathering your thoughts and practicing this pause and you see these cycles or these patterns that are coming out, you have to take a hard look at them. Just look at them and say, okay, maybe I need to step back and I need to put up a boundary for myself. And that doesn't mean you need to shout it out. Like I'm protecting myself from you. You're just mm -hmm. stepping back to assess it. And um, from then you'll you know, it's amazing when you practice the pause and don't react, the insight that can come from doing so. Yeah, I can, I'm thinking of this one time many years ago where I witnessed a situation and a boss was, for instance, and, and obviously this happens, happened in the workplace. Yeah. It can happen anywhere was um yelling and screaming or reaming out this person who had did something wrong and it, it was very minor and i just felt crushed for this person yeah and i thought to myself oh my god i i felt the need to speak yeah. up you mentioned practice the pause yeah and that is so true and you know i had the opportunity at one point to speak with this person about something else and but it, but I did say and I said it very calmly and yeah. matter -factly, I said I understand you know we all witness what transpired today but I think if you need to do that it should be done in private and not out in front of everybody because I good didn't, for you I didn't appreciate seeing that what did that person say they kind of went they they paused for a moment yeah because that makes a not psychological it makes this workplace not psychologically safe for everybody when you see that behavior happening right i mean it, yeah. it was it was frightening to yeah. see that. it really was um 
and you know, I don't consider myself, um, what is the word I'm looking for? I don't get involved with other people's business. Yeah. However, yeah. when I, I witnessed, I was part of that. So I felt the need to speak, I guess is what I'm trying to say. But to you speak. also bring up a good point, Janice. Like I, I agree with you. People's business is their own business, but it comes a point when it's impacting you. Like we'll give the example of the workplace environment. You are impacted by default because that's part of your work culture. So you were not just a bystander. I think it's wonderful that you did say something, you know, and that you, you let it sit with you. So you were able to respond calmly, but so often with the instance you mentioned when I, the work I do with female rivalry, there's this behavior of a bystander that they don't say, say anything or stand up because there's that fear of retaliation that it will also come back onto you. But by not saying something, then it, it means that negative behavior is being rewarded. So mm. hats off to you because it's a hard thing, especially if that individual has any um, in the workplace has any say to, you know, your career trajectory or your promotional, you know, that's your money. That's how you make your living. And so there's fear involved there. If somebody, you know, could raise you or, or lower you, you know, depending on what they have control over. Mm, that is so true. And, and especially in the workplace, as you mentioned, um, document, document, document. Yes, you have to. <laughs> and again, back to the hard questions, if that's a repetitive type of behavior that's happening in your work environment, I'm not just advocating that you go quit, but you have to also look inward. Is this the type of organizational culture that is healthy for me, that I'm thriving in, that I feel like I can be my own person, that I am psychologically safe in? Because if if it's not you, it's going to be somebody else. And if they're not addressing these types, they, meaning leadership, aren't addressing these types of negative behaviors, then will they ever? And so it will go on and on. And we know too, um, not only is there an emotional and psychological aspect, but there's also a whole wellness type of response, a yes. physical 100%. I've, um, I experienced it when I felt it at work. Like I would wake up Sunday morning and I would totally have the Sunday blues. Like, oh my gosh, I have only one more day. I have to go to work tomorrow. I've talked to women that have unexplained health issues, totally bad health issues, all brought on by the chronic stress of encountering and dealing with somebody at work that was so negative and that there's fear involved. And then there's shame involved too, because you're mad at yourself for not speaking up or talking about it, but it, um, it doesn't just, and it just doesn't impact you at work. It goes home with you. You can't compartmentalize that behavior and have it stay in one place. So the psychological, the physical, the emotional, the, it hits on every type of well, as you said, wellness and physical level. And the wellness aspect of it, the or the physical yeah. aspect of it, really, as you mentioned, can take on so many different facets. Um, yeah. Stress, as we all know, the which is correct me if I'm wrong, the physiological response, and then yes. other things like you know stem from that and it really can just wreak havoc on your overall wellness. The things that stress can do to you are, it's amazing. It, um, you, for one, it will impact your sleep. I just wrapped up a course in psychological safety and how stress impacts your brain. And it's fascinating because these triggers, um, your body can begin to shut down. Like if you are emotionally stressed out and due to triggers or, you know, not feeling psychologically safe, which then impacts your physical well-being. You don't sleep well. You're not calming yourself. Like it's, it's, there are so many, you're right. It it's endless what it can impact, unfortunately. And so having awareness of what is causing you stress or, you know, what 
potentially could trigger you is key to maybe walk away or, you know, try to avoid situations. But, you know, if you're stuck in this at work, that's easier said than done. Mm. And the trigger response, and, and I know that we've obviously chatted about this earlier, but think of a, I'm thinking of a trigger response. It, it kind of goes back to for every action, there's a reaction. Yeah. And maybe the trigger response is something as simple as, for instance, you know, all the alerts that we get on our, our cell phones, if we yeah. are stressed from that, you know, and I recognize that I, on one of my trips coming back from Philly, yeah, the alerts and I, I realize, oh my gosh, this is triggering me to be this, just like, <laughs> oh, get yeah. like all tense and stressed out. And yeah. so I turned off all the alerts on my phone. Yes. And that's a simple thing. Or if you're feeling overwhelmed by email, like go in and not do it all at once, but I found, I'm like, gosh, why am I getting all these emails or blah, you know, and it makes me crazy or texts. And I just started hitting the unsubscribe button. And sometimes people sign you up, whether you ask for it or not, but I'll block people, or I'll unsubscribe. It's just little things like that. But yes, that D noise when you're getting, I've, I've turned off my noises too from the text because it can, put you into overload a little bit. <laughs> yes, it certainly does. Wow. Oh, oh my gosh. This has been um, such an amazing conversation. Um, do you have time? Perhaps um, maybe we can um, uh, invite one of our listeners up to ask you a question or. Contribute. Absolutely. I'm, I'm here. So I would love that. Wonderful. Oh, excuse me. Okay, Wisdom, we would love for, we have time for one guest to come up on stage if you'd like to contribute to the conversation, or perhaps you have a direct question for Dr. Amber Tishner. Um, we would love for you to come up um, on stage. So um, let's have someone come up. And as we are potentially waiting for that, I just want to show everybody um, Dr. Amber's book. And of course, I will make sure a link to purchase her book will, will be in the show notes. But um, you. as we are, you're welcome. As we are potentially waiting for someone to come up, um, how can our listeners and viewers connect with you further? So thank you. I am on um, the main social media platforms, LinkedIn, Instagram, Facebook, um, under to be coaching and consulting. That's T O B E. Just a little caveat here in the next month or so, everything is going to switch over to Dr. Amber Tishner. Actually, on social media, it already is. My website will switch over to Dr. Amber Tishner. And so that's how you can connect with me. And that's T I C H E N O R. But um, I welcome, if you're going through anything like this, I welcome any questions, because I think women can feel so alone if this is something they're experiencing. And um, my it's my passion to help help women get through it. Oh, that is wonderful. And I'm telling you, everyone, I have read her book. It is amazing. You will learn so much. But the important thing, too, is you will benefit from the wisdom. And I always love and I refer back to the different women that you interviewed and, you know, thank them for their participation because yeah. it really, it like makes you think, oh my yeah. gosh, I am not alone in going through yeah. what I'm going through. It's so true. And I, yeah, my hat is off to these women because they, be, they became very vulnerable to share their story with me. And for a lot of them, I, it was the first time that they had ever done so, but I think in that process, it, it also process, it also helped them heal or get on the path to healing. And the path to healing can be such an amazing thing. Yes. Wow. Uh, Dr. Amber, I hope that you will definitely consider coming back to the two sisters podcast. And of course the stories podcast, yeah. this has been an amazing conversation. And I think again, we've only just scratched the surface. Thank you so much for being here today. Thank you for having me. You are so welcome. Well, everyone, as you know, in Two Sisters, today is our Wealth Wellness Wednesday. And I'm not going to go into the all of the wealth wellness because you've heard me chat about it before. But why not go out there and create the ripple effect? My name is Janice, aka Wellness Diva 5.0. 
and Carol Sue, aka Nani Boss. She was not able to be with us today, but we shall see you again real soon. Thank you so much for being here today. Thank you, everyone. Bye for now.